Okay, so um, in this session, we will we will look at the person of the Holy Spirit, right? So we will we will look at how uh, what the Holy Spirit is not, who He is not, right? Uh, but before that, let's just look at um, uh, some of the attributes of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes when we consider the the Holy Spirit, we might, you know, we might, in our minds, you know, we, we might consider him as junior God or, you know, uh, kind of, um, uh, he has, uh, uh, is is probably less in power, less in, of importance. So, you know, we might have that thing, but we need to understand that he is fully God, right? Because uh, he's, a, he's, he's a triune God, he is uh, uh, he is part of the Godhead, and he is God. So when we see that, uh, you know, the Spirit of God, he has attributes of God. You know, like we said, how can we say, you know, God is God because he is, is present everywhere. Like, uh, let's look at some scriptures which talk about the fact that he is present everywhere. Okay, Psalm 139 and uh, verse 7. Uh, Psalm 139 and verse 7. Uh, if somebody's there already, maybe they can read it. Otherwise, I'll read it. Okay. Uh, Psalm 139, verse 7. So the psalmist is saying, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? So it's a rhetoric question, um, meaning um, he knows the answer already. You know, where can I go? Nowhere. Where can I flee from your presence? Nowhere. There's no place on earth where you can run to when you're not there. So he is present everywhere. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he is present. Where can I go from your Spirit? Nowhere, right? He is all-powerful. Okay. So Luke chapter 1, that scripture that we saw um, uh, just before uh, in, in the previous class, uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 35. So he is uh, all-powerful. Um, let's read that verse, Luke 1, verse 35. Um, the power of the highest. Okay? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So he is the, it is, it is the highest power that he possesses, and, uh, and that power, that Holy Spirit power, was what will make that miraculous conception possible or make that miraculous conception possible in Mary, right? So he is the Holy Spirit. He is all powerful, the power of the highest. Um, the Holy Spirit is also all knowing. So there is nothing that he does not know. There is no information that he does not know. Okay, so uh, Holy Spirit is all knowing. So we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And uh, verses 10 and uh, 11. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, maybe we'll read from verse 9. Um, but as it is written, uh, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man who is in him? For even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So referring to the Holy Spirit, uh, that he is all-knowing. He knows the things of the Father, so He is all knowing. Of course, the Father knows everything. He is all knowing. Um, he knows the things of the Father. Therefore, He is all knowing. Okay. Um, some of scriptures which uh, refer to the fact, you know, people might ask that question, or you yourself might have that question, you know. But where does it say that Holy Spirit is God? Um, do we have some, you know, direct references? Yes, Acts chapter five and verse three. Uh, where Peter, uh, this is the whole uh, incident with Peter and Ananias and Sapphira and um, 
Peter tells Ananias, okay, this is what he says, Acts chapter 5 and verse 3. Um, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Okay, so this is what Ananias and Sapphira did. Um, they brought the proceedings of the sale and laid it at the apostles' feet, which looked wonderful. It was a noble act of, I mean, it was a very generous act, but it was as if, it was projected as if they had, uh, you know, they were actually presenting the entire proceeds of the sale, but that was not the case. You know, they kept back part of it and and um, and the other part was what was given, uh, but it was projected as if they had given the entire things. Now, this is what Peter said, you know, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 4. While it remained, was it not your own? And after is what's, it was sold, was it not you, in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. So in verse 3, he says, you know, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? And verse 4, he makes a reference saying, you know, you've not, you've not lied to men, but you have actually lied to God. So uh, so we see the Holy Spirit being referred to as God. Okay. Well, he is also eternal, meaning that um, you know he it doesn't have a start date and an end date, right? Uh, there's no expiry date for the Holy Spirit. He's eternal from the eternal past to the eternal future. So um, Hebrews 9 and verse um, 14. Um, let's uh, quickly go there. Hebrews 9 and verse 14. It says, um, But how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, you know, we looked at this uh, scripture, when we looked at um, uh, how the, the plan of redemption, when we saw the, the triune God being mentioned there, um, how, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the, the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. So the Holy Spirit being referred to as the eternal spirit, Spirit. So he is from everlasting to everlasting, from the eternal past to the eternal future. That doesn't have a start date and an end date. He's not a created being. He is God. Okay. Um, and he's also co equal with the Father and the Son. We see that in the baptismal um, you know, instruction which the Lord Jesus gives. His disciples, he says, you'll baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see in the act of creation that all three are involved. So um, they are co-equal, right? The, so which means that um, uh, it's not a hierarchy, though we see different roles where the Father um, you know, uh, is, is architect, kind of designer of the plan, um, but we see the sun going and carrying it out and the Holy Spirit empowering the, the working out of the plan, right? So we see that happening, but they are uh, in uh, um, effect, they are actually co-equal. Um, let's look at a few other scriptures also, Isaiah 11 and uh, verse 2, Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Um, uh, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and uh, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Um, so he's talking about how this is referred to as the spirit of the Lord and also the spirit of the fear of the Lord and the other aspects that is the spirit of wisdom and understanding and counsel and might. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, referred to as the Spirit of God. He is co-equal with the Father and the Son. Okay, so um, he comes to us. It's amazing that um, this Holy Spirit comes to indwell us and speak to us and, uh, and show us the truth and reveal uh, to us the truth, right? So... Uh, the Holy Spirit, the role of the Holy Spirit, or the working of the Holy Spirit, right, is um, uh, uh, you, you know in a way, it, whenever he is mentioned, talks about revelation, understanding, uh, or power, 
uh, especially in the book of acts uh, the baptism uh, you know the, the power and so on so it's possible that sometimes we come to a conclusion that the holy when we, and maybe we have even refer to the holy spirit as it okay like the holy spirit when it comes upon you uh, you know we, we do that out of ignorance and but the fact is that he is a person right so when i'm refer, referring to you or or addressing you i would i would not address you as a it I, um, or when i'm referring to you or let's say um, okay some of you have your cameras okay john paul has camera on so uh, i'll take john's case so um, so i'm referring to uh, referring uh, to ruben about john so i i would not say um, you know ruben you know have you met john bond um, it is a wonderful human being <laughs> you know i would say he or i would say she referring to another human being so is a person right so the same with the holy spirit when we refer to the holy spirit we we understand that he is a person um and um, several scriptures the lord jesus himself while while he instructed the disciples and he taught the disciples about the holy spirit he calls the holy spirit the helper right um let's look at john 14 okay uh, he see he says when he has come he will lead he will show he will remind right um uh let's say uh, verse 17 right john 14 verse 17 the spirit of truth whom the world cannot see because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you so we see that uh, uh, the lord jesus referring to the holy spirit as a person okay so as uh, so, so the holy spirit is not uh, simply a force well he he is he is powerful he is all powerful um he does powerful things he, he he was there at creation um he he was there at the resurrection um he does powerful things right but he is not a force he is not a mindless force or a uh, influence um uh you know or, or or some kind of uh you know attribute that we see in physics you know we don't attribute uh, that to the holy spirit while we see that this is how he works but he is a person okay so let's look at some uh, some scriptures which talks about which point to the fact that he is a person okay uh, let's say first one is he has an intellect the scripture was that we read just now in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 um he searches all things right he searches he he searches the things of god he knows the things of god the deep things so he searches um acts chapter 15 and uh, let's look at that verse acts 15 and verse 28 um this is uh, the council the first council the apostles the elders everyone gathers together and they say okay we need to send a letter to the uh, other churches because there are some people who are actually going there and teaching that one must be circumcised in order to be saved and so on uh, so they write a letter and they send that letter out um so this is what um, you know james uh, so this is the this is the contents of the letter so this is what they write and he said for it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us to lay upon you no necessary burden than these necessary things uh, no um, uh, greater burden than these necessary things right verse 28 so he he searches he knows um he it seems he has an opinion right so um, it seemed good to the holy spirit and the disciples know that and the disciples received that they they walked with the holy spirit they they communicated with the holy spirit and the holy spirit communicated to them right um okay the other things that we see is um, uh, what we saw already that he is truth um he uh, knows truth he communicates truth and he is the truth um uh, how else he teaches and he reminds that's wonderful right uh, the lord jesus saying that uh, in john 14 and verse 26 that he he will teach he teach you and he will also remind you of the things that i've spoken to you so the lord jesus teaches and he is a person who teaches and he reminds 
uh, in Nehemiah 9, also uh, 9 and verse 20, there's a reference uh, about the teaching or the illuminative work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, John 15, he testifies. Okay, what does testify mean? John 15 and verse 26. What is, uh, who is a person who testifies? One who had this something is true. He will, um, sorry, uh, can you just repeat that? Yes, yeah, somewhat uh, attest that something is true. Okay, someone who actually verifies and um, attests that something is true, right? Uh, so I can testify to that when you say that, you know, you know, I know it's true and I'm also giving you the added evidence that that is true, right? And so I'm giving you some information. So he testifies, right? Uh, he, he, he uh, uh, John 15 and verse 26, uh, helper, he proceeds, he will testify of me, the Lord Jesus says, which means that he will give evidence about Jesus. He will testify about his instructions, about his teachings, and about the person of Jesus himself. The Holy Spirit is pointing to Jesus and give evidence about Jesus. So he's testifying, right? Um, and obviously that requires intellect, that requires the ability to communicate, and so on. So he does that. And another scripture is that, that he guides, okay, uh, John 16, verse 13. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. So he's communicating, he's guiding, uh, he will tell you of things to come uh, and so on. So um, we, we see all this uh, mentioned, he will take of what, is of the father and he take of mine and he will declare it to you right so he does that he has a will which means he decides uh what to do and he communicates that decision um it's um it's it's you know it's it's good to see in acts chapter 13 um acts chapter 13 and verses one to four now uh, we're looking at the fact that okay the holy spirit is a person and he has an intellect, he, he can speak, he has a will, which means that he decides and so on, right? So Acts chapter 13. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, um, uh, and who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with uh, Herod the Tetra, and so on. As they ministered to the Lord, verse two, and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Okay, so they've been fasting and then they're praying. This is before the first missionary journey that uh, Paul undertakes. So they've been fasting, they've been praying, they've been ministering to the Lord and the Holy Spirit, uh, he decides to do something and he communicates his decision. Now separate to me, Barnabas and Saul, uh, for uh, I, and uh, and he says now separate to me for the work for which I have called them. So you see that two things here, you know, um, he is giving an instruction now separate. So which means we know that the Holy Spirit will speak, the Holy Spirit will instruct, the Holy Spirit will give strategies, right, for missions uh, and for the work of the gospel. So he will he will do that. He says he's saying you you consecrate, you separate these two people and to which I have called them. So the calling, right? He also communicates the call, he decides the call, he communicates the call. Um, uh, so the Holy Spirit does that. So we see all this in this uh, particular work, right? So he, uh, he is with us. He, the Lord Jesus went, ascended to heaven, and then he said, I will send the helper. Okay, the very fact that he ascended, he sent, and the Holy Spirit is with us, um, leading us as the body in missions, calling us to the things, to the work of uh, ministry, and so on. Okay. Then the other thing that we see is that the Holy Spirit has emotions. So, when we sometimes we think that the Holy Spirit is yeah yeah he's powerful he's God 
he gives instructions. But the fact is that he emotes. You know, he's a person. He loves, he cares, and he is grieved, right? So all that we see. Uh, Romans 15 and verse 30. Um, let's look at a few verses. Um, Romans 15 and uh, verse 30. Um, I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. That's another verse where the Trinity is there, mentioned there, right? Uh, love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me. So he's, the Holy Spirit, uh, he, he can love, he, he, he has love, and he can communicate love. The Holy Spirit also can be grieved. Okay, uh, grief is um, uh, sadness. So the Holy Spirit is grieved. Ephesians four and verse thirty. Um, do not grieve the Spirit. Ephesians four um, and let's read that verse. Okay, I hope you your having your Bible handy and referring to these uh, scripture verses, right? Okay, um, so Ephesians four verse thirty. Um, say, saying, uh, let's look at verse 29, right? Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may, it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Okay, so saying, you know, when there is an unedifying word that is uttered or a corrupt word that is uttered, communicated, then the Holy Spirit is grieved. He do not grieve. And the verses following that, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Uh, so which means that all these other things, like bitterness and wrath and anger, uh, when we display, when we see it, uh, or it is seen in our lives, uh, who is grieved? The Holy Spirit is grieved, right? Uh, so, um, uh, so the fact is that he can be grieved, and uh, and the, and also that he can make us know or um, or communicate the fact to us that he is grieved, that we sense in our spirit that the Holy Spirit is grieved, right? Uh, I just want to share a quick example. I remember once, um, you know, I used to work for uh, for an organization. I was in corporate sales and uh, um, I was um, uh, meeting some clients and so on. This is before I you know, started serving in the church. And I was in this place called Mangalore. And, uh, you know, I had an appointment with a client at uh, about 10, 10 a.m. And I was in my hotel room. And, uh, and and these were the days when the Lord really took me out of a lot of strongholds and weeded a lot of things out of my life. And I was, you know, enjoying my time with God again. Right. So I was just reading the word and, and just worshiping and I'm just, I'm just going, wow, there's so much in this Bible. This, and and I'm I'm just reading. Okay, so around 9:45, I just had this thought. Hey, I need to meet the client, and it was close by. Uh, but I said, okay, maybe I'll just continue to read the word. You know, I, I'm enjoying my time here. Let's just do that. I can meet him later. Uh, but immediately, I sensed that God was not pleased in my spirit. You know, the, the time that I was enjoying, and I could sense the joy of the Lord. You know, there's so much of joy, so much of peace. Well, this was a good thing, you know, reading the Bible. But I was not doing the thing which was actually needed at that time, right? Which God had actually, you know, I, he had placed me in that company. That company was paying me money to go there and meet the client and get the work done. That was the right thing to do at that time. The Holy Spirit was grief. I could sense the grief of the Lord. And I couldn't enjoy the Bible reading anymore. And I knew that, okay, I had to do that. So, uh, you know, so I realized that, hey, the Holy Spirit speaks. The whole, there was uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, I can grieve the Holy Spirit, but not doing the right thing. You know, even if it's a good thing that I'm currently doing, if it's not the right thing, the Holy Spirit is grieved. Okay, so if our life is 
sensitive if our, the way we live our the way we conduct our lives is sensitive to the holy spirit well that's all that's all we need right uh, we have the word of god we have the spirit of god and we can live in victory right okay uh, the holy spirit speaks meaning we have god who speaks you know the more we study about the holy spirit um, it's so exciting you know as a believer i just want to say this as a believer you and i are blessed you and i have a great deal you know in business business terms, it's a great deal we signed up to follow christ and we got more than what we bargained for more than what we you know we we've got the spirit of god indwelling us and i remember the first time this revelation hit me i was so excited that i could not sleep so excited because i was just thinking you know this god who was there at creation okay he was brooding he was hovering over the waters can you imagine earth was not populated and you know everything needs to be created um and the holy spirit was brooding and then we read through scripture and we see the spirit of god speaking to man you know abraham and and all the other prophets and and god doing amazing things elisha elijah the, the power the wonder the fire from heaven all these wonderful things happening um prophets prophesying the miraculous and the holy spirit was witness to these things the holy spirit was involved in you know bringing making all these things happen then we come to the the early church the book of acts and we see the holy spirit um you know baptizing all these people filling them with the spirit and 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 with this power and giving them new language they're praying out in tongues and and the church is born and they're just going radical people sharing the gospel signs wonders miracles the Uh, you know god releasing gifts the same holy spirit right and the same holy spirit comes and indwells me and and you and me you and i when we receive jesus and he's not just sitting there dormant but he's teaching he's convicting us of sin he shows us he um, you know he delights in us and then he he's grieved Uh, he releases gifts and he gives us power to overcome sin that stubborn sin that we thought that we will never shake off you know he gives us the power it's it's a wonderful thing right so as you can't just say i uh, yeah i'm following jesus yeah i'm just getting by each day no 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 you are following the king of kings and lord of lords and you and god has entrusted us the lord jesus he went to heaven and he said i will send another helper one like me who is who is apart from me who one like me and he will lead you he will lead you into all truth and so we have the same holy spirit who was at creation the same holy spirit who you know inspired the writing of the scriptures the same holy spirit indwells us today right now even as you're listening wow right amazing i couldn't sleep that night i remember i was sitting at the window and i was saying wow so excited holy spirit god with me in me talking to me so we have a god who speaks you know the bible is not not about just lifeless principles or formula or do's and don'ts while well, it's a, it's an amazing dynamic um life giving exciting relationship like god speaks now just think about that for a minute god speaks the one who is all powerful the one who is all knowledgeable the one who is ever present he chooses to speak to you and i just think about that he is speaking to us he is imparting his wisdom to us of course we need to learn we need to you know be sensitive we need to be obedient and all that we will do he will help us do it that's the thing by the spirit we put to death the deeds of the body so he's saying okay i've chosen you i've called you i have wonderful life for you and um, and i'm not going to just release you and say that uh, okay you get it done no i'm going to come and indwell you now 
Okay, I'm not just you know, going to be outside of you, but I'm going to be inside of you, speaking to you, teaching you, and I'm I'll I'll every time you read your word, read my word, I will I will teach you, I will instruct you. And yeah, I know that you're struggling with certain things, you know, right from your teenage years, you've been struggling, you've been having some fears, you've been having, you know, you've been esteeming yourself lower and uh, whenever you, you know, meet with some successful people, you kind of shrink. I know that problem, but I'm going to help you overcome that, right? He says, by my power, you know, by the spirit, you will put to deep, to death, the deeds of the body. So... And he's saying, you know, I will come, I will speak. You lack wisdom, you ask, I'm going to show. Right? So this is, this is who God is. This is the Holy Spirit. And he has come to indwell us. Okay? So exciting. So amazing. Um, so he speaks. We pray. He's listening. He speaks. Like he speaks to... Uh, he chooses to speak to, to speak to us through his people. He, he puts things in our hearts and he confirms that through other people. Um, he speaks. He can be insulted, right? Uh, Hebrews ten twenty nine talks about you know how can we insult the spirit of grace? But uh, we can do that if you can insult a human being by saying things that that person has not done, or insulting their intelligence. Um, well, he can be insulted. He can be blasphemed. Uh, what does that mean? That means that uh, you know, you uh, God is a holy God, and um, uh, he 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 does things um, uh, out of uh, righteousness and holiness is nature. But when we say that uh, certain attributes, certain things to God which are not of God, and we speak ill of Him, then you know we know that we are blaspheming Him. Right? Uh, he can be blasphemed to uh, the the Pharisees did that when they attributed, when they saw Jesus um, delivering a person who was demon-possessed, when, when he threw a very delivered that person, and then um, they said, they attributed that to Beelzebub, and they said, no, you know, he, he doesn't do it by the power of the Spirit, but by the power of Beelzebub. So he can be blasphemed too, um, and also... And the Lord talks about, you know, the blasphemy, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which cannot be forgiven and so on. So we, he can be blasphemed too. He can be resisted. You know, the fact is that this, uh, you know, here's the thing, this all-powerful, all-knowing God, he doesn't force his way in, which is amazing. He respects his creation. He's given us free will. He's given us the power of choice. And uh, a beautiful picture is uh, what we see in the book of Revelation where, um, you know, when we're talking about the lukewarm church and uh, um, uh, Revelation 3 and verse 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock, he says. You know, he says, I stand at the door and knock. And he who opens... Oh, yes, I will come, I will fellowship, I will spend time. But he stands at the go at door and knock, which means that, you know, when the Lord is doing something, I can resist his work because of my choice, because of my stubbornness, or because of whatever, you know, whatever uh, fears that I might, I, I might. I can resist his work. I can say, God, stop it, enough. You know, it might be a noble thing, it might be a good thing, but... Whatever, you know, I make a choice and I can say, you know, uh, stop it. You know, I'm not uh, doing this further. I can be disobedient. I can resist the work of the Spirit. Okay, that's something that we need to know. And he can also be quenched in the sense, 1 Thessalonians 5.19 talks about the fact, uh, you know, while talking about uh, prophecy and so on, uh, Paul writes and he says, you know, um, do not quench the Spirit. Okay, the quench, uh, the, the word quench just means that don't throw water on. And put out the fire. Okay, so uh, 1 Thessalonians, uh, let's look at uh, verse 5 and verse 19. It says, uh, Do not quench the spirit. Uh, and after that, he says, You know, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every. So, a, a, a lot of instruction he gives the church um, pray without ceasing, rejoice always, and everything give thanks, and so on. Then he also says, Do not. Do not <coughs> excuse me. 
do not quench or do not put out the fire. The Lord is leading you in a certain way. The Lord is, um, you know, asking you to do certain things and he's leading you, you know, um, do not quench. Do not quench his work. Do not quench the, the work of the Holy Spirit. So, um, so we see when we look at all these things, when we look at the fact that he he has a will, he has an intellect, he searches, he communicates, he has emotions, um, he, he he can be insulted, he can be blasphemed, and you know he can be lied to. We see that the Holy Spirit is a person. Okay, uh, while he does powerful things, while he does amazing things, he is a uh, he's a person. So we can relate to him as a person. He wants us to relate to him as a person. So that's a beautiful thing. Okay. So we're going to take some time to uh, just a couple of minutes to pray, and then before we close this session. But um, uh, you know, based on what we have heard now, you know, just go ahead and relate to God as a person. Speak to him as you have never spoken before. Right. I want you to forget about all these religious words. If you're used to praying in King James English, thee, thou, you just put it aside for a minute and just speak to him as you would to another person. Right? And just say, Lord, you know, he can be loved. And just say, Lord, I love you. Just say, Lord, I thank you. And say, God, I thank you that you indwell me. You know, indwell, you stay with me. You are closer to me than any other human being. And it could be a spouse, it could be a family, and everybody is outside of me. But God, you indwell me. You and you speak to me in the in the hidden part. You know me inside out. You know, literally, he knows us inside out, you know, because he's inside of us. So just tell the Lord, Lord, I love you. God, I thank you. Maybe we can take this time to just say sorry. You know, maybe you know we could be we could be in ministry, we could be in whatever we could be doing, you know. But maybe we ignored, neglected just talking to God, just opening up our hearts and talking to Him. Maybe we've kept hidden things hidden in our lives. Uh, it's not that he does not know, but we have not really spoken to him about it. All right. The Holy Spirit, he is close. He is close to us. And he wants us to be close to him. Father, thank you. Oh, Spirit of God, we thank you. We are truly blessed. Truly blessed. You are amazing, God. Thank you for stepping into our lives. Thank you for calling us out. Thank you for leading us to your heart. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you for those times that you warned us, Lord. We thank you for your powerful work in us, Lord. Breaking sin of our lives, God. And you're continuing to do that. We thank you that you will never leave us, Lord. Because you've come to abide with us forever. Lord, we thank you. We invite the work, your work, your ministry. Oh, may it increase a thousand times, God. May it increase a thousand times, God. We thank you. I just come at each one, each person here, every student here. Lord, I pray that may there every waking moment, every time they wake up, Lord, I pray that that conversation will continue. It will it'll not be, prayer will not be a religious thing for certain times of the day, but it will be a constant communion, constant conversation from our spirit to yours, Lord. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Um, and um, yeah, thank you, Isaac. Just.
bring that prayer out in text. Okay, God bless you all. I'm going to stop the recording now. And um, thank you. Sure.